Hey everyone, Peter McCarran from the Developer Experience team here at LaunchDarkly. And today we're gonna talk about managing teams in LaunchDarkly. You know, one of the most challenging things about feature management solutions is that as we start to scale and incorporate more applications into that platform, we need to have a way to be able to restrict access or control certain permissions for our users to make sure that people are only changing features in the right places. With LaunchDarkly, we try to make that easier through a feature called Teams. And in this demo, I'm gonna walk you through how you can set up your teams, how you can create custom roles, and how you can use audit logs to be able to have visibility over to when those changes were made and by who. So here we are in my LaunchDarkly account. If you've used LaunchDarkly before, this screen may look familiar to you. This is the member screen. This is where we invite different users to our LaunchDarkly account, which means they have access to all of the different projects and environments that I'm using for my different feature management needs. Now, LaunchDarkly does provide a way that when you add a user, we have different built-in roles that will determine the level of access that they have to all projects within your LaunchDarkly account. Now, adding members is a great way for managing access to the LaunchDarkly account as a whole. But as we mentioned earlier, the whole idea here is I want to get a little bit more granular in my permissions to restrict who has access to what in a very controlled fashion. And in order to do that, I use teams and custom roles. So if I go to my teams page here, as the account owner, I have the ability to create different teams. I simply name them, I have a key which would be used for different API purposes, and I can select maintainers. The maintainers are great because I can have different people who manage different teams, which means me as the account owner, I don't have to be responsible for all the teams that are going to be using LaunchDarkly. Once I've set my team up, I have the ability to be able to add a user. As you can see, I went ahead and added our example user that we had earlier. Now, if you remember, our example user had read-only access to our LaunchDarkly project. So let's switch over to their account and take a look at what that means. So now we switched over to our team member's account. I changed it up from the dark mode so that we can distinguish between the two different accounts as we're flipping back and forth. Now, if you remember, that team member only had a reader role. So even though they have the ability to see all the different projects and environments that are available, they can't actually make any changes. But now I've added this person to my store dev team, so maybe I want to give them different access to our toggle store environment. So let's do that now by setting up a custom role. So now back in our team, we've shown that we've added this member to our team environment, but they don't actually have permission to do anything. We're going to update that now using a custom role. If I click the permissions tab here, I'll have two different options. I can add different custom roles that maybe I've created previously, or I can create a new custom role. Let's go ahead and create a new one to get us started. When you create a custom role, what we're doing is we're defining specific actions at different levels of LaunchDarkly, and we can get as granular as doing this for a single flag and as wide as our entire account. So maybe this is the store permissions custom role, controls permissions for flags in toggle store. I can use this resource finder to be able to identify different th elements that I may want to control the access to. So that can be at the environment level, that can be at the project level, that can even be, like I said, down all the way at the flag level. I'm going to go ahead and set up this resource so where we can say that our project is going to be the toggle store, the environment will be all the environments within that project, and all the flags. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say we're going to allow them to do specific actions. In this case, we could have them allow them to create flags, delete flags, clone them, be able to update them, however we want to do. Again, we can control these permissions at a very granular level. To start, let's just go ahead and turn this on for all the actions. We'll update our statement and we'll save that role. Now we can go back over to our team and we can choose to add a custom role. As you can see, we have that store permissions one that we just set up. We'll go ahead and add the custom role and that has automatically been applied to all of our team members. So again, our example user. So let's flip back over to their screen now and see how LaunchDarkly has changed. So here we are back in our environment. You'll notice right now nothing has changed. Let's go ahead and refresh the screen and see if we see any updates. As you can see, we now have the ability to turn flags on and off in this project. However, if I were going to switch to a different one, let's say our entitlements project, this user still has read access only for this. So let's think about this for a moment. What we've done is we've restricted access for those team members to a specific LaunchDarkly project. And within that project, the only thing that we've given them access to is being able to manipulate our flags. So now we're back on the admin account uh, for our LaunchDarkly project. 
This is the same project that we've been working on with our example user, but we're just showing this that let's say I was the admin for this particular project and I wanted to be able to observe the changes that were happening. In order to do that, all I have to do is go to our audit log function. Within the audit log, we're gonna give descriptions of the changes that have been made within this test environment in this project. It's also gonna give you things where if we've used things like an API token to be able to make changes and what those changes were. So in this case, the last time I did, we were doing a data dog demo where we changed the default role of toggles and goggles to 100% and just toggles over to 0%. So let's make a change on our user side and see what happens to our audit log. On the user side, let's say that we're going to change the labeling for our store cards to be a different value. Currently, it's serving as new. So in this case, we're going to say, we're gonna target a segment of our developers with our new sale, just to see how this looks. We'll turn this change on. Testing new banner copy. And we save our changes. Over on our audit log side, if I refresh my screen, you'll see that here are the changes that we just made. Our example user updated this flag in our test environment, and they added a rule saying that if the user is in the segment developers, then we should turn sale, and then they turn the flag on. So this is a really granular way for us to be able to keep track of when changes were made and by who. We can even export these into different integrations within LaunchDarkly, we can, such as Slack notifications or PagerDuty alerts. Make sure you check out the integration catalog if you're curious to learn more about that. So as you can see, teams are a great way for us to manage different sets of users who are going to be managing different projects within our LaunchDarkly account. Within those teams, we can use custom roles to be able to change their permissions, but restrict them only to that team environment and for specific projects or even specific flags. And then we can always observe it using audit logs to be able to know who made changes when and what exactly those changes were. This was just a taste about all the different ways that LaunchDarkly helps you from a governance perspective. I highly recommend going to launchdarkly.com to learn more. Thanks for watching.